Today I want to talk about the best marches you can make with an artifact in Rise of Kingdoms. And yes, this is one of the more exciting items you can get in the game. Changing all of a commander's skills and also their museum buffs from one troop type to another. So stick around in this video for my experience with some of the very best combos in the game. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chisco Gaming, and as you can see, I'm still on vacation, so I hope you don't mind the sunscreen or sunburns on my face, depending on what day it is, and the background is of course a little bit different than normal. I still want to crank out these videos, and I realized I needed a list talking about the best marches you can make with an artifact. Now if you're not familiar, an artifact is something that is available to you in a growing number of KVKs. I believe it was initially just Warriors Unbound, and then it was in Storm of Strat stratagems, and then it was in Tides of War, and it might even be in some other ones as well. So when you're in one of these KVKs, which is in the end game, you get the option to pick an artifact. So for those of you not familiar with how an artifact works, I have the selection screen up uh, on the camera right now so that you can see the exact wording. But very simply, you take one of these items, you put it in the accessory slot, on your secondary commander in a march, and it takes all of their skills, all of their museum buffs, and it converts it to the chosen troop type. So I always choose the one in the middle, that's the Berserker's uh, brooch, and that lets me convert whatever commander I put it on into an infantry commander, okay? The uh, Lancer's banner converts whatever commander you put it on uh, as the secondary into a cavalry commander one on the right, I guess, point that way. The uh, Sniper's Fletch, I mean, you get the idea. It converts them into an archer commander. So you only pick one. So typically, if you rally your garrison, you pick the troop type that you rally your, your garrison for. But in this video, I also want to cover what are some of the best open field combos. Now, before we get into the open field, let's first talk about the garrison combo that is so insane that honestly it knocks literally everything else out of the water. Like we're going to talk about garrisons and rallies and field. You can use the timestamps in the description to jump to what you want. But for garrisons, Gorgo with Attila was insane. I used Gorgo with Attila and at times I was trading two for one positive against 1960, which is nuts. There's not a kingdom in the game, arguably that at the time that we were fighting them had a better swarm that they could throw against a flag and a better rally they could throw against a flag. So yeah, this garrison is insane. You do need to keep it very full if you use the Gorgo and Attila combo, but it is busted. And the crazy part is that you can run it either way. You can run it Attila Gorgo or you can run it Gorgo Attila. Both work. The thing that makes this thing really sing is obviously the insane counterattack and normal attack damage boost. That's where it's at. So you're going to be running, I would say, obviously the arch formation. And I think that even using Attila as the primary might even be better than the garrison captain as the primary, weirdly enough. Like, I cannot believe that in 2024, I'm coming to you with a video that's like, hey, guess what? Attila's meta, but like, the dude is insane. Or garrisoning. Now, with that said, when it comes to rallying, I want to talk about a couple things you can do that seem to always be good. And then I want to talk about, okay, so beyond that, what could you do for anti-swarm? And what seems to always be good is you take whatever rally you were doing and you just replace one of the commanders with Henry. And I know that might sound a little simple, but Henry is just really, really, really good for rallying. Like, really good. He's doing a lot of damage mitigation. He's doing good single target damage. And he is also making it so that the target is going to take more skill damage. This combination of things seems to be really, really gangbuster. And you do want your Henry Rally to ideally be directly targeted by the garrison, because when you are directly targeted, you have a 10% chance to deal 800 damage factor back to the attacker. This combo, really any combo, you you, you put in a Henry and it's better. How to give him Ziad? Better with a Henry as the secondary than what you were doing. Um, if you're running a Cav Rally, okay, let's say it's Justinian, better with Henry as a secondary. In, in, in most cases, just swap in a Henry and you're probably going to do better. Now, with that said, um, there were other commanders that filled a similar sort of a role or vibe. For example, I saw people bringing in Nevsky as a secondary, and that seemed to do really well. So Tarek Ibn Ziyad... Nevsky secondary, and it's easy to see why. It's the same 2300 damage factor with some different tricks. The Nevsky is kind of better against swarm or being swarmed situations, okay? Um, also, Nevsky wants to be targeted, however, 
in order to trigger the 30% health. Now, those are just two commanders that seemed to be really improving whatever they were a part of. If you wanted a pure DPS option, you put the Zuge Leong as the secondary. <laughs> so like now you're blasting a ton of AoE damage. You're hitting reinforcers to the garrison, which isn't all that important in my opinion, but it does have the effect of sort of slowing down the speed with which they're keeping the garrison full. So it's less about the Sev wounds in my opinion and more about harming their velocity for filling a garrison. And Zuge Leong is much more of a glass cannon option. So how to give in Ziad with Zuge Leong is your, you know, glass cannon, infantry, AoE, blasty rally, right? Like Justinian with a Zuge Leong is kind of nuts as well. Now, granted, Cavalry already had a good option. Like you could just do Justinian and Nevsky together, right? And there's a bunch of other things that we'll talk about in a minute for, for rallies for Cavs that, as it turns out, in my opinion, are even better. But man, let me tell you, um, Nevsky and Henry and Zuge Leong all fill these really cool roles. The final commander that really fills a cool role but is a different one is, of course, Pakal. And anytime you needed anti-swarm, you boy Pakal, you swamp him in as the secondary. And that seems to work extremely well, I think, for pretty obvious reasons. But the damage mitigation is insane. The counterattack damage dealt is nuts. You're going to trade somewhere between... Two for one to four for one positive if they try to swarm it. And you'll probably end up killing the troops of someone who doesn't understand what's happening, especially if you can put reinforcements into that rally. It's just really dumb. And on the topic of really dumb, I think it's possible that one of the best rallies you can do with an artifact is actually Attila again with Liu Che. So Attila as the primary, you use Liu Che as the secondary. You can run it the other way, but it's better this way. Attila primary, Liu Che secondary. And man, um, the thing is that Liu Che is doing smite damage. So Attila is going to go in and say, well, hey, we take less skill damage, but deal 30% less skill damage. And Liu, says, Liu Che says, hey, I don't care. That's fine. I don't deal skill damage anyways. So the Liu Che just works extremely well, extremely well in that combo. Attila primary, Liu Che secondary. It is very difficult to swarm. It is the rally that... Attila with Nevsky always wanted to be and never was. Attila with Liu Che, that is actually what Attila Nevsky was always aspiring to be. So if you have an artifact, that rally slaps, man. Um, it, it's going to stick to whatever you put it on, and it hurts to swarm if they, if they go for it. You can do it, but so the amount of normal attack synergy here is too freaking strong. And you do extra normal attacks. Got it. It's busted, all right? Now on the topic of busted talk about the open field. And I want to cover what I would say are some of my favorite combos, all right? And these are combos I have experience with, with the exception of one of them. And it's the number one combo. I haven't actually used it, but I've heard so much good things about it that I actually just, you'll see why when I talk about it, all right? See if you can guess now what it's going to be. We're going to start with Guan combo, all right? Guan as a commander is powerful in the open field. He does area of effect damage and it's a silence attached to it. And that effect is really good. It's especially good for swarming garrisons. If you have a lot of guans, you can cause some real havoc. However, the problem with guan is he has no defensive staff. So the cool thing about an artifact is you compare him with a commander that has a lot of defensive stats and all of a sudden Guan Yu is kind of nuts. So a couple really cool commanders I have used with Guan Yu and been extremely happy with includes Nevsky. Nevsky is going to make it so that you've got a bunch of health and march speed. You get a bunch of defense and damage mitigation. You get procced health. You get skill damage boost. A lot that is obviously good there. I have used Nebu with Guan. And when this march does not get targeted, oh my god, it is cranking skill damage. Nebu has some fat AoE damage. You get 30% defense, which is flipped over to infantry. You get a march speed boost. This does really well. A better version of this would just be Asher Benipal, obviously. Okay. So those alone are some really good Guan combos, but you can do better. And the thing that 1960 was using in the open field extensively is Huo. That's right. Huo, who I can find, I assure you, with Zuge Leong. You could also do Isong. This is 
the most common artifact march I saw in 1960 use, and our KVK against them. And there's a couple reasons why this is powerful. First of all, Huo's got big single target damage, but second of all, he reduces the rage requirement. So you can blast some AoE really early, and remember that Zuge Liang is going to then reduce the damage of enemies when he hits them with his area of effect damage. So that combination is really powerful. And even with just Esong rushing out a lot of AoE damage, especially because Esong generates rage on, I believe it's his second skill, triggered AoE, or, or rather triggered rage gen, right? And attack boost. Let me tell you, you put an artifact on that march and it can crank out a lot of damage. Do I think it's the best march though? I do not. The best march that I think you can possibly make is going to be Joan primary with Asher Benapal secondary. Now that I've mentioned it, you probably are like, oh, yeah, okay, I can see why that would be the case. Let me explain. Joan is looking for some tanky stats. She's got just like a little bit of health, and that's kind of it. But on this fourth skill, not only does she give herself health, she also has a chance to trigger in fact, it's going to be a 100% chance when you max the skill. You have a 100% chance to trigger the active skill over again, and it's got a 10-second cooldown. So whenever their troop's secondary commander uses an active skill, it has a 100% chance to trigger this commander's sacred banner skill. The synergy here with Asher Benapal is that you can then go in when you have him expertise, and every time an active skill is used you're going to gain one of these buffs for four seconds. So your first skill cycle, this is going to trigger three times. You're going to get potentially three different buffs, all right? So Joan uses her active skill. That'll trigger Omnipotent. Ash will use his active skill. That'll trigger Omnipotent. Joan will go again. That will trigger Omnipotent. And at this point, your skill cycles basically refreshed. And Joan is using her active skill all over again, and that is going to trigger Omnipotent. It is a really busted cycle, and you just get a lot of puffs rolling. Now, Asher Benapal, also on the rest of his kit, is not slacking. 1,500 damage factor plus another 1,000 on top to your primary target. Um, you also get an attack boost, a defense boost, which Joan really needed, and a march speed boost. In addition, we've got some skills that, okay, like... A small boost to skill damage and something relevant for hitting cities. Um, a little bit less normal attack damage taken and rallied army stuff. But just triggering Omnipotent over and over is actually really powerful. And it felt like, from what I was hearing, this is probably your best combo that you could run. Uh, now a lot of people put Ash other places. So which combo you make ultimately will depend on what your troop configuration looks like. I mean, if I take you to my restart project, the reason I have so much experience with Guan and using, you know, for example, Nevsky, is that I felt like I needed another good infantry commander to fill out what I had in my roster. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the way you might use your artifact, despite some of these best combos being really powerful, is to say, hey, you know what? I only have one, let's say, cavalry set. And let's say you've got, like I do here, I've got... Nevsky, I've got Huo, I've got Joan. Okay, I've got three Cav Commanders and one set of Cav Gear and one Cav Armament set. What do you do? Well, one option is to do what I did and you say, okay, I'll run Huo with Joan and then run Guan with Nevsky. Really great way to do that. The other thing I could have done is I could have said, hey, you know who's sitting on the bench? It's freaking Esong. So I could have also found a way to bring Esong in. I don't know that Guan Esong is necessarily the best, but Sargon e Esong is kind of weird uh, in its power level. So I'm mentioning this because although the best combos are really powerful, keep in mind what you actually have available, okay? And which of your most powerful commanders would sit on the bench, but then you can bring them in. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll throw a like on here and consider subscribing. And check the cards in the end screen if you want to see me fighting with some of these artifacts applied. And you can see, like, oh, hey, here's what Cheskul was doing when he switched around some of these marches. I have a video in particular. I think it'll have a thumbnail like KVK is fine and everything is burning around me. You'll like the intro to that video. I'm using Guan Nevsky in that one. And, uh, yeah, it's really powerful.